In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use OpenAI's function calling feature to create an AI agent to automate your workflow. Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What the Funk. In a previous video, I showed you how you could use OpenAI's function calls to return structured data from GPT. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can leverage OpenAI function calls to let GPT make decisions about certain actions to take depending on the prompt. But first, if you're new around here, here on What the Funk, we talk about all things programming related, whether that's AI, blockchain, or just plain coding. If that's something that you're into, please consider subscribing to this channel and clicking that bell notification icon so you can stay up to date whenever I post a new video. Let's get into it. Moving into the code, let's first look at what a normal conversation with ChatGPT looks like under the hood. Every conversation is just a series of messages, and each message is labeled based on their role. To start out, every conversation usually starts with a system message. The purpose of this message is to set the tone of the LLM. The system message is usually something along the lines of, you are a helpful assistant, please answer the following questions to the best of your ability. And then the conversation continues with messages from you, the user, the human messages, and the LLM will reply with an AI message. Every time you send a new message to ChatGPT, it just tacks it on to the previous set of messages so the LLM can have a memory, so to speak, of the previous conversation conversation. This is how GPT is able to answer questions within the context of previous questions and answers. OpenAI's function calling takes this a step further. You can now provide a list of functions and their definitions, and based on the prompt that you pass to GPT, GPT can either return an AI message or return a function to call. So for example, if you provided a list of functions, let's say function 1, 2, and 3, and let's say function 1, the description was set as a function that can return the current weather, you as the user could send a message along the lines of, tell me the weather for today. Because GPT sees that there is a function that can return the current weather, instead of a AI message, it returns a function to call. So the AI message itself is actually empty, but it does return another parameter with the name of the function and the parameters. Now it's important to note that GPT cannot call functions on its own. The way this works under the hood is that you as the developer will take the function response from GPT, you Use that to call the function externally in your own code, and then return the result of that function as a function message. And this is tacked on to the previous messages in the conversation. GPT will then take the entirety of the conversation, the function that it returned, the response that you send back, and then intelligently answer the question from the original prompt. What is the weather for today? Now that we have the knowledge of the basic steps, let's go ahead and implement this in code. Here in my terminal, I've created a directory called openai-function. Next, using Anaconda, I will create a virtual environment called openai functions. Once that's been created, I will activate it using the activate command. Then using pip, I will install openai, langchain, python.m, and streamlit. Next, I'll create a file called .env and set my OpenAI API. I'll do that off screen. Next, I'll create a file called app.py and import the following dependencies. In this example, we're going to use a dummy CRM. This imaginary system allows us to create emails, email lists, and send emails to those lists. In order to use this with OpenAI, we need to define some functions. So first, we create a function descriptions array. The first function we add is an add contact function, and this adds a contact to a specific email list. It takes two arguments, an email and a list. The next function is create list. This creates a new email list, and it only takes one argument, a name. And the final function is send email. This sends an email to all contact in a list. This takes three arguments, a list, subject, and a body. Next, let's create a template to use as our prompt. And in our template, we have use the provided functions to carry out the following request and respond with a short summary of what you did. And then we have a placeholder for our request. Next, I've defined the actual functions that we're going to call. And because we're not using a real email marketing system, these functions simply return a string of what was actually supposed to happen. Next, let's Let's define our main function and set it as the entry point of our application. In our terminal, we can start our app using streamlit run app.py. Here we have our empty app running in our browser. Let's go ahead to the menu in the top right corner, settings, and then we want to check run on save. Now that that's checked, our app will go ahead and hot reload anytime we update our application code. Back in our app, we will use streamlit's session state to store the history of our conversation. We'll call this variable messages and it'll be an array. We'll initialize our chat opening. AI model using GPT-4 and the latest version. 
We'll go ahead and set a simple title, set an empty status box to show the status of our application and what it's doing. Then we'll create a form using st.form with a text area to store our requests and a submit button. Finally, let's create an empty section to store our result and display that when it shows up. In order to handle a form in Streamlit, all you need to do is check whether the submitted variable, which is assigned to the value of the submit button, is true. And this lets you know that the user has submitted the form. Now in our application, we can submit either one or multiple tasks. And the way we're going to handle this is with a loop. And basically the loop only ends when the tasks are complete. So we're going to set a task completed variable and set it to false. And I'll show you how this is actually used later in the code. Next, we'll set the status area as processing. We will format our prompt and set the content to the value of whatever request the user has sent. Then we'll start by appending the first human message to our messages array. That that we set above. Then using our LLM, we will go ahead and send the message and the functions that we defined up above and get a response. Now just to test to see what happens, let's go ahead and write that response to the app. So just a quick test, I'm going to send a hi, how are you? You can see we're processing the request and down below as a response, you can see it sends the typical GPT response. As an AI, I don't have feelings or emotions, but I'm functioning as affected. How can I assist you today? Now let's go ahead and try to create an email list like we are talking to an actual person. So here I've sent a request as follows. Please create an email list called FUBAR. Let's go ahead and send it. Again, it's processing. And you can see in our response, the content is empty. But in our additional keyword arg variable, we see we have a function call, the name of the function. So create list, that's correct. And then the argument. And remember, we only specified here in our function definition that create list takes one argument and that's a name. And so here, GPT returns the name FUBAR. So let's continue back in the code. Now, based on the slides earlier, and then what we just saw, we could probably assume that when GPT sends an actual human language response and additional keyword args is an empty object, that it has completed all of its tasks. So here we're going to check whether or not additional keyword args is an empty object. If so, tasks completed can be set to true. Next, we can create a while loop that will only end when task completed is true. We'll append the latest message returned from GPT. The content should be empty and the keyword args should be the function call. Next, we'll save the name of the actual function to call. Then we'll call the LLM once again and check whether or not it returns a human language response or another function call. Outside of our loop, we can go ahead and print the response and let's test this once again. I almost forgot, in order for us to see what's going on under the hood, I want to log out the function that's being stored every time we call the LLM. I've gone ahead and opened up the terminal so we can see what's going on whenever it gets printed out. And this time I'm gonna send more than one request to our application. So here's my prompt. I've written please create an email list called foobar add the following emails bob at example.com sally at acme.com then send an email with subject hello and body blah 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 so let's go ahead and run it and see what happens it's processing you can see it's starting to populate with a bunch of function calls and finally you can see our response so the response is i created a new email list called foobar then i added bob at example.com and sally at acme.com to the foobar list finally i send an email with the subject hello hello, and body, blah, 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 to all the contacts in the foobar list. And that's exactly what we want. Now over here in the terminal, you can see the functions that were returned from GPT. So we have create list, add contact twice because we added two contacts, and then the send email function. And this is perfect. Now the final piece of the puzzle is to call these functions externally within our code and then return the response back to GPT. First, let's get rid of this print function, create an empty result variable. And here I've created a series of if statements that check which function was returned from ChatGPT and then call those functions, evaluating the arguments returned from GPT and the additional keyword args property. Then just to see what's going on, we will print the result of each function. Next, we'll append this new function message that I talked about earlier with the result of the function call we just made. Then to finalize everything, we will write the response.content to our results block that we defined earlier and then set the status to task complete. I've opened the terminal again to see what's going on and then set the prompt with a series of tasks. Let's click go. It's processing once again. Perfect. Tasks completed and our response is I created a new email list called cold leads. Then I added the emails bob at example.com and sally at acme.com to this list. Finally, I sent an email to the cold leads list with the subject hello and the body blah blah blah. If we look over in the terminal, we can see the response that was returned 
from our dummy functions. So we have created list cold leads, added Bob at example.com to cold leads, added Sally at acme.com to cold leads, and then sent email to cold leads with subject hello and body blah, blah, blah. And that's it. That's how you can use OpenAI's function calling feature to let GPT automate your workflows. Now, this was a very dumbed down and contrived example, but hopefully this demo has shown you how you can adapt this to real life use case. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to smash that like button. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.